Yeah, so greetings. So today I'm going to talk about continuity across a seam. So notice what I have here in Katia GSD Workbench. I've got a surface that I created with uh, the multi-section surface tool. And I'm going to do a mirrored image of it over the YZ plane of my axis system. And so when I refer to continuity over the seam, I'm meaning this seam as shown here. A seam that's essentially split by the, or defined by the YZ plane. And I like to see good continuity across these seams. I'm gonna talk about a couple of ways to do that and what that means for you as far as good, uh, good quality surfaces are concerned. So I'm gonna get rid of this to begin with. And let's look at my wireframe entities. So, uh, and so I'll hide, hide my surface here. So I've got some um, a wireframe going. So I've got spines or splines. I like to use splines over sketches. I try to avoid sketches whenever possible because I feel like I can manipulate the splines better. It takes a little bit of work to set up, but I think it's worthwhile in the, in the long run. So I've got a couple of sections for my spline or for my loft and I got a couple of guides sitting here so one thing I'm looking for and when um, when I do continuity across the seam is making sure that my wireframe entities go across the seams themselves at the same level of continuity that I would expect my surfaces to so if I look at this first sp spline we can notice at the bottom that I have point one of the of the of the spline going across uh, tangent. In this case, the tangent direction is going to be the x axis. Now, how did I set that up? So I want to remove this and um, tangent direction. So I selected here. The tangent direction which is the x-axis so I selected that as my tangent direction so that means that the curve is going to go um, at this point is running tangent to the x-axis and another way to look at that is that this tangent vector at this point is going to be parallel to the x-axis and as I dig down into this spline definition dialog box, I can show the parameters at this point and notice that it's coming from curve and that it has uh, tangency as a continuity level, which is going to be uh, G1. There's also the option for uh, G2 continuity if, if that's what you prefer and in addition to that another reason why i like splines is you got the tension value which doesn't affect your continuity uh, but it does add um, some to your spline and makes your surface a little more interesting so i'm going to remove this to show you something um, that my i don't like to see my students do so um, what, and I'll show you what a bad surface or a bad continuity is going to look like. Now, obviously, that's not going anywhere near perpendicular, but maybe I can get it close. And I'll even have students in scenarios like this try to throw in some extra points just to try to to get the, the spline to fit and go per, or go across this perpendicular to my seam plane. Um, that certainly isn't the best way to do it. I try to avoid selecting extra points when necessary. But I could come back into the spline and go to point two and increase some tension here and try to get it to to push out a little bit more. Or maybe I can even add a point in here to try to get it to go across. And let's, let's just do that because I want to come up with a really, really bad continuity across my seam here. So I'm going to go into add point after. I want to just add this little point in here. That That's terrible. But that. Yeah, I'm actually going to remove that. That's not what I'm looking for. But all right, so that's a bad continuity across the scene. But at least it'll make my point. No pun intended there. So let me do the same thing here. I'm going to remove this continuity support for point one. So I want to come down here. I want to remove a show parameters. I wanted to make sure I re remove that uh, target there. So yeah. So if I go back and look at my surface. 
All right, there's my surface. So if I did a if I did a mirror on that or symmetry, if you will, correct term in Katia's GSC workbench, I can mirror across my seam plane, and then you can see. And this is a little bit exaggerated. Sometimes I have to dig to find this in students' but work, but you can see that that is G0 continuity across. Now, G0 means they do share an edge, but that's it. The, the, the slopes of this surface, this first surface at this edge and the slope of this next surface at this edge are not the same. So that is G0 continuity across there. So let's see what that's gonna look like uh, with an analysis thrown. So, I like to use the uh, isophotes mapping analysis. This comes from the freestyle workbench. I think you can get it in a few other workbenches as well, but I brought it over to the GST workbench. So I want to pre-select these two and let's, let's put in, and I've got to turn on materials here in just a second as well. So let's pre-select those two. Uh, I'll turn on materials. You can see the results. So, Let's put this in spherical mode. And you can see when those come together, you can see that edge. So notice the lines, if you will. I call this a zebra stripe analysis. But if you notice, the, the stripes on both sides do not line up with each other. So you got a stripe, a black stripe coming in. And then it doesn't line up with a black stripe on the other side. So that is showing that that is not G1 or better continuity. I can probably adjust that a little bit to make it a little bit easier to see. That's probably a little easier to see. And notice how they're not the, the stripes, the black stripes, nor the white stripes are lining up with their respective um, uh, or stripes on their respective side. So again, that is G0 continuity, which is not what I'm looking for in this uh, situation. So I'm going to go back and let me get out of this analysis. I'm going to go back. Let me turn my splines back on and let me show you what I'm looking for when it comes to continuity uh, across the seams. And so the first thing you got to do is make sure your wireframe entities have the same level of continuity that you want your surfaces to have. So let's right now assume I'm going to do G1 continuity across the seam. So I can come into my wireframe entity and at point one, and I can add that in. I want to be very intentional on how I do this. So I can add that in with this constraint type of from curve. And the from curve, even though this isn't a curve, that works with the axis as well. But if you've got curves that are created, and sometimes I will create reference curves in advance to make sure that I've got something to go uh, a G1 or better across with. But here, that's another advantage of using an access system over your default reference planes is you can select these and use them. But there are other ways to do it as well. But this is just one way I like to do it. So I can select that and notice that it pops right now. It's G1 retained to see continuity uh, ac across that seam. So let me... Do it to this point and add this one back in and it's still in there. Notice I didn't take it out, so that's fine. So let me verify that real quick. So that's point one. I thought I took it out. Maybe I didn't. I think I took out the wrong one earlier, but that's okay. So uh, now let's throw my analysis back on. So I'm going to go back to material display mode and let's hide my wireframe and that's looking better across the seam. Now, notice it's, it is off just a little bit. It appears to be off just a little bit. Let me look at my mapping analysis. Kind of adjust it a little bit. All right. And then you can see it's off ever so slightly. Now, it seems to be getting off in the middle. And it's really hard to see sometimes, but it seems to be more off in the center than it is at the ends. So uh, another thing I like to do, and this is the, the second part of what I like to do, is 
I like to um, not necessarily completely rely on my wireframe entities. So I want to come back here. Let me let me hide this this symmetry surface. And what I want to do here is create a reference surface. It's still just a surface. It's going to be an extrusion. But I'm not going to combine it with any other surface later. So I like to create my own geometric set for references. So notice I've got a geometric set called a reference here. I can make that to the find work location. What I want to do is create an extrusion here. So let's do an extrude. And I will do this in the X direction. And it says normal, which is fine. Contia will squawk at me if I left it that way. It will allow me to do it, but I want to change it to be more intentional here and do X component and reverse my direction. It doesn't matter how long it is, so I'll just stretch it out just a bit. Now notice it goes under my reference element. So when I come back to my surfaces and I go back to my loft here, that is on a guide. That is on guide two. So I've got section one at the bottom, section two at the top, guide one over to my left here. So this is guide two. You can see those in the dialog box here. So this is guide two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be very intentional here. I'm going to make that go as a support surface. And right now, if you can notice, the continuity is tangent. Notice it turned red. That means it's got to update. So hit OK. It updated. I want to hide that reference surface for now. Let's go back and turn on my symmetry or unhide my symmetry, hide my wireframe. And then let's look at the analysis by going back to material display. And that is looking better. It's really hard to see, but that is looking better. Um, even at the top in the middle, it's looking better as far as continuity going across that seam. So notice the extra step I took there by adding that reference surface that allowed that forced that was very intentional in forcing explicitly this loft to go G1 across that seam. So notice the two things I did here. First, I made sure my wireframes were G1 across that seam. And then second, I made sure that my surface was G1 across that seam. So your surfaces are only going to be at the level of continuity that your wireframe entities are, are at. So just for practice here, let's change this to G2. So I want to get rid of my material display mode, turn my wireframes back on. So how would I do that if I wanted G2? Well, you just got to set your continuity level at G2. So let's try this first. And this might work. I haven't practiced this, but let's do I normally I would do the splines first, but let's do the surface first and see if it squawks at me. It may not. Uh, it may be close enough with intolerance. Katia won't uh, give me any issues, but let's just see. So I want to change that support surface to curvature. Oh, it didn't update, so we should be good there. So but I oh it, yep, uh, it's showing tangent. Wow, so let's try that again. Go curvature. Oh, there we go. Now, there's the red. Oh, uh, and so Katia is squawking at me. Uh, and I hate to use the word squawk, but yelling at me is <laughs> probably a better word. But And, there's, and the reason why this isn't working is because my curves are still just G1. I'm trying to force this surface to be G2, and my curves are still G1. So let me cancel out of that, and let's do it the correct way. So the correct way is going to be is, is to make sure my wireframe entities are, are uh, G2 first. So I'm going to come in, go to this top one, which is 0.1. I want to verify that that's 0.1, and it is. So 0.1, I want to change it to curvature. Oh, look at that. Now, if that is coming out more than you want it to be, you can certainly adjust that tension from a design perspective. So that's, again, one of the things I like about uh, using splines is your ability to do that. So, But that's drastically changing my design, which is okay uh, for this demo. And I want to do the same to this side. So that's point 0.1. So I'm going to change that to be curvature. And then, you know, you're getting a different effect here. But that's okay. So so got that added in. Let me hide my wireframe. 
and let's turn the analysis back on by setting materials. Oh, and it almost forgot. Got to make sure the surface is also um, now. Let's see if it will update. I'm going to change it to curvature. Change it to curvature. Keep forgetting to select this that spline. So there we go. So now the surface. So I've got the wireframe entities and the surface going G2. So let's display that analysis. So that's G2 continuity. So I'm looking at a good scene there. Uh, so G2, um, you've got the same slopes of the surface and the same radius of the surface at that point. You can see the seam. It's really even hard to find the seam unless you're really digging around and running your mouse over the surface, which is good, right? That's what you want. You want it to be a nice reflection. When you're looking at G2, if you're required to have G2, you're more than likely you're trying to get a good reflection uh, off of this for a surface, uh, maybe a class A surface or a surface that's going to be seen from the outside of your product. So that is my discussion on continuity across seams and being very intentional about it. So just to reiterate here, um, if you want good continuity across your seams, it starts with your wireframe entities. So it starts with your wireframe entities, making sure that they have the same level of continuity across your seam that you want your surface to have. Get those set up and then go to your surface and make sure it has that level of continuity. In this case, I was a little more intentional than I see some of well, I should say my students do, is I added that reference surface in, which allowed me, and I'll turn that back on here, and which allowed me to have something to go uh, G2 to in this case. So uh, anyway, and this is a reference surface. So I put it, and this is for my best practices for my students, I put it in its own geometric set. That way I can hide it later and it won't be involved in any of the surfaces that I'm actually tr working with here. I can join these two together and end up, you know, so I like to keep my surfaces organized in that way. So I hope that helps. Have a great day.